Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a review for you, and the product which I will be reviewing is this. It is a fountain pen, but not just any fountain pen. This is the Lamy Safari fountain pen, a very popular pen. If you are a fountain pen person, chances are you have owned this at one time or another. Fairly inexpensive, made of plastic with a steel nib. It uses a cartridge converter filler system. But I thought we'd just go over the pen. We'll take a little closer look at it. I'll talk about some of the features, tell you what I like about it. We'll do a writing sample. And at the end, I will give you my conclusions as to whether or not this pen is worth having in your arsenal. So let's take a closer look. So here's how the pen comes when you purchase it new, at least if you purchase it from an American distributor. And like I said, it's a fairly reasonably priced pen. It goes for around $25 to $30. Um, places like GouletPens.com, AndersonPens, Amazon.com. I think it's a little cheaper on Amazon, probably closer to $25. And on Goulet, it's around, I think, $29.60 or something like that. But fairly simple packaging with that kind of industrial design look that Lamy seems to like. If you open the box, you get the pen, you get a little bit of information. I think there's just the warranty policy on here. So if the pen breaks, you can send it back to Lamy and they will fix it for you. Nothing too spectacular though. The pen itself comes this away with one blue Lamy ink cartridge, which I have never used, um, but it's decent ink, Lamy blue. This little cardboard sleeve to hold the pen apart so it doesn't actually puncture the cartridge when it's in the body of the pen. And the pen itself, you can see the grip section here. I got mine in the charcoal color. So actually when I got this pen, it came with a black colored steel nib, but I purchased this calligraphy nib. This is a 1.1 millimeter stub. Um, the actual nib is this here. And I got this in a broad because I wanted a wide variety of different Lamy nibs that I could sort of mix and match. But when you normally, most of the other colors for the Lamy Safari would have steel nibs. And the clip on this is also black in the charcoal, but on the other Lamy Safaris, it is a just stainless steel color. But you can see here, it's made of an ABS plastic and it does feel like plastic. It does feel kind of cheap, but it's supposedly fairly resilient. It has a little ink window here, so depending on whether or not you decide to use a cartridge or a converter, you can see the ink level, but the fact that this is just a cutout, it's not actually a window, means that you couldn't convert this pen to eyedropper fill if you felt like it. So obviously if you put ink in there, it's just going to fall right out. So don't do that. Now this accepts the cartridges, as I mentioned, but it can also accept Lamy converters, and these are proprietary converters, so inter standard international converters or cartridges do not work. I opted for the Z26 cartridge converter, and this is for, you know, most Lamy pens like the Studio and things like that will accept this converter. And then there's the Z24, which is actually really intended for this pen. It has these little, um, indentations on the side are actually these little dots which fit into these cutouts when you pl um, push it into the body of the or the feed area and it kind of clicks into space into place this doesn't have that but it just pressure fits and it's totally fine so if we take a look at the black steel nib that this charcoal colored safari came with you can see it's very plain it just says lami b for broad and the stainless steel nibs which most safaris come with are basically exactly the same except a stainless steel color. This is a fine. So I actually have an extra fine, a fine, a broad, and this 1.1 millimeter stub. All of these nibs are interchangeable amongst these Lamy pens. They basically fit every single Lamy pen except the Lamy 2000 and I believe the Lamy Dialog, which is kind of their version of the Pilot Vanishing Point. It's a retractable fountain pen but they will fit the ABC, the Accent, the All-Star, the Joy, the Logo, the Nex, the Purr, the Safari, the Scala, the Studio, and the Vista. So it makes these pens really versatile. You can buy one pen, medium, broad, whatever nib you want. I think it goes from extra fine, fine, medium, and broad in the normal Safari. But then they also have their Lamy Joy calligraphy line, which has a 1.1 millimeter stub, a 1.5, a 1.9. Actually, I guess they call them italics, but they do have a little bit of tipping on them. 
And so all of these nibs are interchangeable and they range from about, I think on gouletpens.com, the black nibs are $13 and then the stainless steel nibs are uh, 1050 and then the calligraphy nibs like this one, this is the 1.1 millimeter italic is uh, $13 as well. So you could buy one pen and just a bunch of different nibs if you wanted to and you'd have a lot of versatility in terms of line variation or if you had several nib or several pens, this is a Lamy Studio by the way, you can mi mix and match the nibs between pens which is quite nice. Now in terms of size, you can see here I have three Lamy pens, the Lamy 2000, the Lamy Safari, and the Lamy Studio. They're all very, very similar in length. And then when you uncap them, first the 2000, the Safari, oops, and the Studio, you can see that the Safari is actually a little bit longer than the 2000 and the Studio is the longest of the three. And so it's not a huge pen, but it's not small by any means as well. It fits fairly well in the hand. I have giant monster free cans as we've discussed in previous videos, but you can see even unposted, it fits okay. And the actual stats on the lengths and weight and everything, I believe the overall length when capped is 140 millimeters. When posted, it is 164 millimeters. Um, when uncapped, 129 millimeters. The grip diameter is around nine millimeters and the weight is about 17 grams. It's a very light pen. It's just made of ABS plastic. So if you want a really weighty pen, then this might not be the pen for you. But in terms of comfortability, is that a word? Ease of use, I find it's perfectly fine. And because it's so light, long writing sessions are not fatiguing at all. Now, the one thing that people might have an issue with is this grip section. And you can see here it's faceted. It has three facets and that is intended to help you use the proper grip when you're holding this pen. Some people do not like that at all. Some people have different grips. If your grip is in any way different than the standard pen grip, then this isn't really going to work for you. Some people like to hold further up and that in that case, you'd be kind of getting on these ridges where the facets end. If you like to hold the pen really close to the nib, you have this area where the, it sort of flares out. For me, I find this, perfectly comfortable, like I said, for long riding systems, doesn't bother me at all, but it is something to keep in mind. If you don't like this grip section, you will not like this pen. Filling the pen is quite simple. As I mentioned, it does accept these Lamy cartridges, which I do not use. I like to use bottled ink. So with the converter installed, and remember I'm using the Z26, you can use the Z26 or the Z24. The Z24 has a red piston knob. But basically, operate the piston, get it down in there, open up this bottle. I think we're gonna use some Diamine Crimson here. Submerge the nib up to the grip section. Just make sure you're submerged far enough. And sometimes you have to operate the piston a couple times, but there we go. And we'll put the cap back on the ink to avoid any mishaps. Wipe the grip section down a little bit and the nib. And there we go, we're ready to go. Where's the body? Easy peasy. So let's do a little writing, shall we? I like to write with it unposted, works just fine for me, even though I have very large ha hands, hands, hands. This is the Lamy. Safari in charcoal. We don't need to write that, but it has a 1.1 millimeter italic nib. Now, a little bit of quick brown fox action here.
dog is so damn lazy. Now you can see this is a 1.1 millimeter stub, so obviously if you got this in the original broad or you know you can get extra fine, fine, medium broad with the Safari, the calligraphy nibs like this one or the italic nibs actually only come on the Lamy Joy, but you can buy them separately and interchange them. So this line variation that you see here is a result of the 1.1 millimeter italic nib. So you can see there's you know, 1.1 millimeters of line variation. There's not really any flex in this nib, you can see, but it's not supposed to be. The line variation comes from the fact that it's an italic nib. But I've really noticed with all of these nibs, <clears throat> and I've owned, as I mentioned, an extra fine, a fine, a, I don't, I guess I don't have a medium in these Lamy steel nibs, but I do have the broad and then this italic. They've all been really smooth. They've all been really, really well aligned. I haven't had any misaligned nibs straight out of the box and they've all written really well. And I'm actually kind of surprised because I've had more expensive pens with more expensive nibs, some with even with gold nibs, which haven't written as well out of the box as these Lamy nibs. And granted, this is kind of a small sample source, but in, in my experience, they've all written really, really well. Now this pen, it's kind of hard to show how wet it is when you're using an italic because the the cross stroke is so thin but it's a fairly wet pen and at least with this 1.1 millimeter it really keeps up really well i haven't noticed any problems at all with it falling behind i would assume maybe if you get up to the 1.5 or the 1.9 it might have a little trouble keeping up the feed but with this it's perfectly fine i'm really happy with it it's not too dry it's not too wet but, well, that's still pretty wet. Let's see here. Let's put another patch down. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty wet. It's not soaking wet, but it is wet enough. It keeps up with you. Um, and obviously, if you have an extra fine, that's not an issue at all. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way this pen writes. I'm really happy with this 1.1 millimeter italic, too. I like the ergonomics of it. It's very comfortable comfortable for me. It does feel a little cheap. It does feel a little plasticky, but it is kind of cheap and it is made of plastic. So I guess that's a trade-off, but I'm really happy with the writing experience. So there you have it, the Lamy Safari fountain pen. In my opinion, a pen well worth owning. It's relatively inexpensive. It's convenient because you can use the cartridge system if you like, but then it also can use a converter so you can use bottled ink, which opens up a huge world of possibilities in terms of colors and brands. It has interchangeable nibs, which are relatively inexpensive, so it's very versatile. And depending on what you feel about the grip section, I find it a very comfortable pen to use and a very easy pen to use. It's one that's just nice to have around. You can throw it in a bag. You don't have to worry too much about it because it's not that expensive. I quite like it and I recommend it. If you have never owned a fountain pen and you're thinking about delving into that world, this is a really good place to start. So thank you so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. Good day.